In today's world, most of our life is spent on our electronic devices. Whether you're surfing the net with your smartphone, amending a presentation with your computer, or blasting aliens with your game's console, you're using something that runs on software. We give computers instructions through the software interface. These instructions are then translated by the software into a language that the computer can understand. Before software as we know it, there were several early attempts at programming computers. Punch cards were the first. These cards were simple paper cards that had rows of dots. If the dot was punched, it represented a zero. If it wasn't, it was a one. These cards would later be replaced by reels of magnetic tape. Magnetic tape took up far less space since storing stacks of cards was very impractical. It was still no easy feat to program. The actual term software wasn't used until the late 1950s. Many of the early pieces of software weren't available commercially. Instead, computer users, mostly scientists and large businesses, often had to write their software themselves. In 1954, the transistorized computer was introduced. But serious commercial systems did not arrive until the 1960s, leading to mainframes like the IBM System Series, a substantial jump in computing abilities. In 1970, an IBM researcher described how data could be stored in tables of related rows and columns. The idea revolutionized the IT industry. IBM began selling software in the late 1960s and early 1970s. It meant that data structures could be standardized so that different programs could use the same data. This was the first time commercial software was available to the average customer and the ability to add different types of programs to any computer quickly became popular. In 1970, the first microprocessor was developed by Intel as a cheap way of making general-purpose calculators. This little gizmo led to the microcomputer revolution of the late 1970s and 1980s. When computers became small enough to be sold to individuals, software became much more prevalent. Home users couldn't program their computers themselves. Instead, the operating system was created. In the early 1980s, IBM selected a small company called Microsoft to provide their operating system. Microsoft's MS-DOS was licensed to IBM. For every IBM PC sold, Microsoft would receive 40 US dollars. Microsoft was on its way up. Through the 1980s, spreadsheets, word processing, and PC database applications led the way with Apple also now a major player in the PC and OS markets. Software became more and more complex over the years. In the early days, commands were typed in and early software only accepted keyboard input. Because floppy disks could only hold a very small amount of data and most personal computers had no actual hard drive, software had to be very simple. That changed as computer hardware evolved. By the 1990s, microcomputers began filling old mainframe computer rooms as servers, and the rooms became known as data centers. The continued rise of the Internet allowed for the development of virtual data centers by the end of the decade. CDs could hold much, much more information than floppy disks, and programs that were once spread across a dozen floppies fit on one CD. The creation of DVDs, which hold even more than CDs, has made it possible to put bundles of programs, such as the Microsoft Office Suite, all on one disk. Now even DVDs are becoming obsolete. Many people purchase and directly download their software. In 2006, Amazon Web Services began offering IT infrastructure services. Increasingly, vendors are now moving to Software as a Service (SaaS), a software licensing and delivery model in which software is licensed on a subscription basis and is centrally hosted. Overall, from 2015 to 2020, IT spending on enterprise application software will grow at an 8.6% rate, SaaS growth will be 19.3%, and can be expected to reach $76 billion by 2020. The rise and establishment of the Internet of Things IoT, is driving even further expansion of enterprise software. It is estimated that within the next five years, there will be more than 25 billion devices, sensors, and chips handling upwards of 50 trillion gigabytes of data. That's more grains of sand than you'll find on this tropical cartoon beach. Software has come a long way, and the importance of software is now paramount to a company's success. 
speak to License Dashboard on how we can support you to manage your software today and be prepared for the challenges in the next software era.